right. Good morning, everybody. I, I think we have the winter crowds here this morning. But anyway, we're going to have a good time with the Lord this morning. But I'd really like us to start off this morning just by standing. Uh, we've been talking about repentance for the last couple of weeks. And uh, we're going to do another week of repentance this week, repentance part three. So we're talking about repentance. But just as we go into worship this morning, I think it's a good place for us to start and just say, Lord, is there anything in my heart that's between me and you? Because this morning I want to come in and worship you with all of my heart. So, Father, we just pray if there's anything in our hearts this morning that we have not repented of, that because of this world and just sometimes just conforming to the world, we've glossed over this thing and we've We've just accepted it as part of our life. Lord, would you just show it to us this morning? Because this morning, Lord, we want to run into your presence and praise and worship you. If there's anything, Lord, we say we are sorry. Because the truth is, Lord, we wouldn't want anything to get between us and you. Nothing. We choose you, Lord. We're excited to come into this place this morning and praise and worship you this morning, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. You are Alpha. And Omega, we worship you, our Lord. You are worthy to be praised. You are Alpha and Omega. Story. 
I can't see what you're doing. I know that you're proving you're the God who comes through.
With all of our hearts, we worship you this morning, Lord Jesus. Yahweh, Father, we worship you. Holy Spirit, we exalt you in this place. It is our desire that you draw us into your intimate presence. Think of how many times you've you've called us into your intimate presence so that you can counsel our hearts, so that you can bind up what is broken, so that you can change our perspective, 
so that you can heal our waywardness. this morning, Lord Jesus. Let's just take a a little break quickly and have some announcements and we'll come right back into the sung worship. Good morning, everybody. Good to see you guys here. Glad a few more of you came to join us. We were about two people at nine. It was me and uh, no, the worship team. But uh, we're glad a few more of you joined us and uh, just really enjoying the Lord's presence this morning. And so I don't want to take up too much time. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to um, continue worshiping the Lord with tithes and offerings. But then also, um, I just want to announce, I, I have posted an advertisement on the Wellspring Communication Group about a doctor... Sarul van Amerva being in town next week with his wife and they're going to do some ministry. Uh, Please take note of that advert and if you would like to, you need to just respond to the number on the advert. Um, If you haven't seen it, go look on the Wellspring Communication and you'll see it. Um, It's it's a little bit of inner healing ministry that's going on and uh, yeah, good, good to take note of it. I'm thinking that's something I'm going to go to. And while we're in this attitude of worship, uh, Salome and the kids going to go out just now? Okay, don't go yet, kids. I'm going to ask Fiona if she would come up. Fiona's going to come up and share something. And then I'm going to ask Liesl to come up as well. Liesl. Good morning, everybody. Um, indeed, how great is God? Today is Jurian's 25th birthday. And uh, for those of you who know, I'm here to just share a very, very short testimony about the journey that um, our family had um, journeyed for last year. It's in the form of, um, I think Michael will say, a lyrical poem, a story, uh, but a poem nevertheless. July last year brought with it its dreaded cold and an unusual storm that would squeeze my heart, make me catch my breath and test my faith. A diagnosis that was designed to make fear the monster it is, leukemia. Oh, what my husband and I wouldn't give to trade places with our boy. July brought with it the love of friends, the gift of family, and the goodness and favor of an ever-present God. Yes, the storm was hectic, the hail was painful, the rain was cold, and the wind was howling with a thousand scary voices. But the inner calm I felt came from knowing him who was in control of the storm. He spoke to me through the leafless trees, the cold frost blanketing the brown grass, This is a season, he said, and it too shall pass. The inner calm I felt came from the slight smiles of strangers that peeped above the mandatory masks they wore, and from friends via texts, and spontaneous gate ministries from family who sacrificed so that we could be comfortable. Then, just as he promised, the three-month storm was at last tamed. The waves calmed to mere ripples, and the hail was nowhere to be seen. Remission, the rainbow that was painted across the sky 
and another promise was sealed. The flowers and the trees, a sign that spring has sprung and new life has begun. To God be the glory for great things he has done. Thank you. Morning, everyone. Um, yeah, I just want to share a little bit about our prayer this morning, but I want to do it in the form of prayer. I'm not going to tell you about it. I'm just going to pray for us. Um, but before I do that, I just want to um, invite you all. Every Sunday morning, 8.30, we meet up in the upper room, and you are welcome to join us. Um, yeah, we really have wonderful times there together. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, this morning we come before you and we just want to confess. We want to confess that we don't always put you first. We want to confess that so many times we run after things, our lives are hectic, we are busy. And we don't put you first. We have other idols that take our time, that take our energy, Lord. And we bring those before you this morning. And we, we ask for forgiveness, Lord. We are sorry that we don't put you first. And I want to ask this morning, Lord, that you will speak to each one of us individually that you will reveal to each one of us where our idols are. They might be hidden, they might be subtle, Lord, but they are there in every one of our lives. Holy Spirit, speak to us, reveal to us, help us to recognize the idols in our lives and to turn away from them and to serve you first, Lord. I also want to bring the, the deception before you, Lord, that we experience every day where we don't um, see your truth, where we are deceived by the enemy, Lord. Every one of us does not have the full truth that you have. So this morning, I just want to ask, Heavenly Father, that you will show us your truth, that we will not accept other human beings truth as the real truth, that we will not accept our own truth or how we see truth as the full truth, but that we will hunger and seek your truth. Holy Spirit, open our eyes, open our ears so that we will hear your voice, soften our hearts to receive what is true in your eyes, Father. I also pray that we will walk in your timing, in your direction, Father. So often we think we know what we're doing and we take off in a certain direction, Lord. But that is not what you had planned for this moment, for this season. So today, I surrender to you on behalf of this body. And I pray, Father, that you will lead and guide us that we will walk in your direction and in your timing for now, Lord. So this morning I ask that whatever is released during the sermon, Lord, that it will be your truth, that it will be for now, for your timing, Lord, and that we will have softened hearts and fertile soil to receive what you have for each one of us individually this morning. Thank you, Lord. part of your worship, you can bring your tithes and your offerings as we stand and worship together and the kids will go uh, to Sunday school now.
Jesus, it's your blood. Your cross. Your cross testifies in grace. Tells of the Father's heart to make a way for us. How boldly we approach the earthly confidence. It's only by your blood. You are 
your feet this morning. Come to your feet, Lord Jesus. You have the words of life. Speak to us. By your word this morning, by your spirit, speak to us. To shout and speak to us. Let your voice speak loudly. Speak to us. We are your children. We are your disciples. We sell our whole lives to gain you. You are the treasure of our hearts. Speak what is true. Speak into us, Lord Jesus. Speak what is true. We know that sometimes, like David says, it's hard for a man to see his own sin. But that your word penetrates, that your spirit is able to penetrate. to reveal our secret hearts to us this morning as we go into your word, as we continue to seek your face in worship in the word. Speak what is true over our lives, Lord Jesus. God's people said amen. Do you have a word? Ethan? The Lord is saying, the good work that I have started, I will finish. You are the honor of my hands. Nothing can pluck you out of my hands. Thank you, Roman. Anybody else got a word before we go into the word? Three, two, one. Nobody. Alison, is that like a... <laughs> All right.
So we welcome the Holy Spirit here this morning. And uh, we ask Him to speak to our hearts through the Word. And He reveals Word to us. He teaches us the truth of God's Word. And uh, I stand here realizing that I could totally get in the way of what the Holy Spirit wants to do this morning. Uh, but I really don't want to. And that I pray that as we talk about repentance again this morning, that if there's anything more the Holy Spirit wants to reveal to you, that He would reveal it to you. So just ask the Holy Spirit to uh, speak to you this morning. Now, Father, as we go into your word, we've already prayed for the word, but I just want to pray for my heart, Lord. Um, Lord, that my heart would line up with your heart and my words would line up with your word this morning, Lord. Lord, I pray that <laughs> the man in me would move out the way, Lord, and that, you would, that I would just become a vessel for your word this morning. Lord, I pray that you would open our ears to hear your word this morning. And our hardened hearts would be soft to receive the word this morning. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place. Amen. So, um, before we get with it's repentance part three, and um, you know, as I've been preparing repentance, just talking about this, this is something God laid on my heart while I was uh, lying in hospital a couple of, I, I don't even know how long, I actually don't really care <laughs> how long ago it was, but uh, I was lying in hospital and God started to speak to me just about repentance and, uh, and that we needed to talk about it in church. And I don't think he put me in hospital to talk to me about this. I don't think that's how it happened. But I must say it was really, really nice to just lie there for four days and, um, and just, yeah. I don't think I've ever done nothing, nothing for four days in a long time because it's not easy for me to lie around. And, um, but God spoke to me. So this morning, Liesl prayed. And if you can be honest, maybe just be honest with yourself. I won't ask you to raise your hand. But when Liesl prayed and said, Lord, we confess that we don't always put you first. If something in you went, oh, that's not me, then maybe you should listen to the word this morning. Because we tend to do that. We don't like to hear confession in church. And we don't like to hear repentance in church. And we do this little thing. And I think it's something that the enemy does with us is... We, we try to figure out how I can be least responsible for what they've just confessed in church. Like, if I, I put the Lord first, especially on Sundays. And we try to work our way out of that confession so that we don't have to confess it. Maybe she had a word, Hansi. I don't know. <laughs> um, so, so, yeah, if, that sat, if something in you went... <clears throat> Ask the Holy Spirit to speak to you about it. Okay. Matthew 4, 17 says, From then on Jesus began to preach, Repent of your sins and turn to God, for the kingdom of heaven is near. How many of you think the kingdom of heaven is near? They've maybe been asking this question in churches for many, many years, for centuries. <laughs> but I believe the kingdom of heaven is near, and we need to repent. And we've been talking the last few weeks about a lifestyle of repentance where we repent. We just say, Lord, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I did that. I'm sorry I thought that. I'm sorry I said that. It does not line up with your word. It does not line up with who you want me to be in your word. It doesn't I'm not being a child of God when I say that. I'm not loving you with everything I have. I'm not loving my neighbor as I love myself. I am sorry. And we get it out the way. We don't just repent or say we're sorry just to say we said it. But when we really have a relationship with God, when we repent, we repent so that we can get back to Him. Okay. You Mark Sheldon, you've said that twice already. Good. I see that you've been counting. I read this uh, quote this week that said, freedom to confess sin comes from Jesus Christ. Freedom to confess sin comes from Jesus Christ. Why? Because when I confess my sin, Jesus is faithful and He forgives my sin. Sin. That's what he wants to do. And if our freedom, uh, freedom to confess our sin comes from Jesus Christ, why would we not want to confess our sin? It 
2 Chronicles 7.14, because this morning we're going to talk a little bit about corporate repentance. I, I use that word like I know what it means, but I'm thinking more like when um, it's not just me, Sheldon, repenting, but maybe Kristen and I could repent as a couple. Me and my kids could repent as the Hallett's family. We could repent together for maybe something we've said and done or missed. Um, we could repent together as a church. Um, now, I know we have the greater church of Petra Teeth, okay, but we could repent together as Wellspring Ministries. Maybe we missed something. Maybe we just forgot about something He's called us to do, and we've just, we've just been so busy with our lives. Maybe we just need to confess being lethargic. I don't know. Just being flippant with His Word or, or the Great Commission. Um, so we can confess as, as Wellspring Ministries. Then we can confess as the church of Petra Teeth. Hey? We can confess as the church of Peter Teeth, Lord, you gave us this town, we've dropped the ball, we've just let the enemy run loose. I don't know. But then we could confess as the church of Peter Teeth. Then Peter Teeth can confess their sins. Hey? We could repent as a town. I mean, it's happened in the word of God. We're going to look at Nineveh just now. They repented as a city. Okay? So Peter Teeth could repent. South Africa could repent. That's what we're talking about. Now, I think it'd be hard to motivate the whole of South Africa to get on their knees, okay? But as believers, we can get on our knees and we can repent. And there's been a lot of repentance that's gone out uh, with, like, um, the, um, what, did, uh, what was Graham's thing that he, what did he call it uh, when we prayed? It wasn't, it was a global day of prayer. Okay. I thought it was just started off as South Africa praying. Um, but there it was some transformation. Yes, transformation, prayer day. So, so the scripture they used there was Second Chronicles 7, 14. And a couple people, I know I wore that little thingy for a while, bracelet or whatever. What do guys call that thing? Armband. I was bangle. We don't wear bangles or bracelets. But anyway, I wore that thing for a while with the scripture, Second Chronicles 7, 14, to remind us if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will heal their land. Do you think that scripture is still relevant today? The Lord gave that word to Solomon, hey? Solomon had built a temple and the Lord gave him this word and, uh, and, and, and the Lord said, I may stop the rain, I may stop, send the locusts, I may send sickness. But if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven and I will heal their land. That sounds like a promise, um, but we have to humble ourselves and pray. You cannot repent if you're not willing to humble yourself. We, are, we, we as a church cannot repent if we are not willing to humble ourselves and say, Lord, we might not might have, because <laughs> I'm trying to get out of it already. Lord, we have dropped the ball. That's humbling sometimes, to admit that you've dropped the ball. Hey? After, what a great foundation for Wellspring Ministries hey, was set over uh, what we did 50 years, two or three years ago, so maybe 53 years. What a great foundation has been set for us. We need to make sure that we don't are not willing to humble ourselves, that we, we need to be willing to humble ourselves and say, at some stage, we've dropped the ball. And I, I've been part of Wellspring Ministries. You do the math. Um, I'll do it for you, actually. I've been here since the 1st of January, 1998. It's a really long time. Simone's been here even longer than me. Derek was here as long as I was. And um, so I've been here for pretty much half of the church's history. And uh, in that time, it'd be good for us to admit that we've dropped the ball somewhere if we need to. Lord, we're sorry we did that. And that's what we're going to do over the next two weeks is we're going to pray because we're going to have a, 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 a service where we're going to repent. And why are we going to repent? Okay, We're going to repent because we don't want anything to get in between the way of us and what God wants to do as a body. We want Him to be able to use us. We want to be able to man, run into his presence together as a church. We want to make sure that there's nothing between us and God, not even the smallest little thing. So even the smallest little thing 
we will say we're sorry. If God wants us to repent for serving, um, what's the worst coffee you get? We used to get that Van Riebeck's coffee, hey? You, anybody remember that? It was basically chicory. And um, we will repent of that, even if it's something small. If we feel that's what the Lord's saying we need to do, we will do it. We have to be willing to say we will do it. And then we have to be willing to say as a body that we will do it. So who's the newest person in church this morning? David, you came last week, okay? Can I pick on you? Okay. David was in church last week. He's been here for two weeks. I've been here for 24 years. Um, David could sit there next week or in two weeks' time and say, I don't need to repent. Cool, you guys do your thing. I'm just going to sit here and watch. Or you can say, you know what? I'm a part of this body today. I'm going to repent with them. You see, when we repent of sins... As a body, it doesn't mean that you are necessarily guilty of that sin. But we want to make sure that there's nothing between us and God. You guys cool with that? You guys understand that? You guys ever read that story in Numbers 25 um, where the Israelites were um, taking other women, the Moabite women, and bringing them back to the camp and they were... um, sleeping with the women, the Moabite women, the men were doing that. They were bringing them to the camp and and that absolutely ticked God off because he was angry. His anger burned against Israel and and there was a plague that killed 24,000 people. And um, some of the people, you read the scripture, they're at the the tent of meeting and they're busy crying out to the Lord because this plague is killed 25, 24,000 people, okay? Um, to put that into a picture for you, if 24,000 people in Petra Tief died, that means a quarter of Petra Tief would be gone. We would notice. You would notice. You would suddenly notice Monday morning there's a lot less cars on the road. Kids would go to school and realize that a quarter of their classmates are not there. It's, it's a lot of people that were dying. And they fell on their knees and they're praying and they're repenting before the Lord. And while they're busy repenting before the Lord, some guy walks past with a Moabite woman and takes him off to her tent. Takes her off to his tent. And Phineas gets like really, really mad. And he goes and puts a spear through both of them. (laughs) Kills them. You know what happened? Immediately, the plague stopped. When I look at that story, I want to make sure that when we're at the tent of meeting and we're crying out to the Lord and we're repenting, that there's not somebody off there that... uh, Be a part of it. Be a part of what we are doing because we want to do it together. God has got great things in store for Wellspring Ministries. I believe God has got great things in store for every church in Petra Teeth. But I believe He's got a a plan for every church in Petra Teeth. That's why not every church in Petra Tief has an orphanage or a school because God hasn't called them to do that. He's called them to do other things in his kingdom. But God has got great things in store for Wellspring Ministries and we want to make sure that we leave nothing between us and God that the enemy can use to stop us from being able to fulfill the plans and purposes that God has for us. So we will repent. We will say that we are sorry. I wrote here, the less we repent, the more we will conform to this world. The less we repent, the more we will conform to this world. And what the world considers to be fine, we will become fine with as a church. And that cannot happen. So we will continue to repent. We will continue to ask the Holy Spirit to show us if there's anything between us and God. We're going to get intentional about repentance. I hope in the last couple of weeks you've been intentional about repenting to God and to others as He's highlighted things to you. They might be big, they might be small. You know, sometimes we hide things that we did long ago, and um, we just, we, we don't see them anymore. Either we've put up a wall, or we've made excuses so much about that, that we've hidden it. And you can ask the Holy Spirit to show you.
So as we look at corporate repentance um, as a church, as a, as a town, as a country, um, we need to be Holy Spirit-led with our repentance and not media-controlled or media-led. Media is not going to tell us the biggest issue in South Africa right now, and that's what we're going to repent of. It might be something we need to repent of, but we're going to be Holy Spirit-led so that we don't miss anything that the Lord wants to show us to repent of. If you look at, if, you, if I asked you something we need to repent of today, just shout something we need to repent of today, as a corporately. Anybody? Don't be shy. Nobody wants to say it. You're all thinking it. Pride. Pride. Holy smokes, Annika. You were close. It, it was, it, racism is something we, that's, that needs to be repented of. Worldwide, hey? It needs to be repented of. But we can't just focus on that. We need to make sure that, you know, if South Africa just focused on racism, we as a nation need to repent of abortion. Your dad had some serious stats on his Facebook this week about abortion, which is, which is disgusting. If you want to go read Uncle Neville's stats, his article, what he said wasn't disgusting. It's the fact that how many people we've killed. You, you, you get what I'm saying? We, we as a nation cannot just get focused on one thing and forget about all the other things. We cannot get hard in our heart or soft in our heart to all those other things. We really need to stay and be Holy Spirit led when it comes to repentance. Now if I say this morning that we need to repent of racism, um, somebody might be like, well I'm not a racist. I'm not a racist at all. I like to think that I'm not racist. Okay? Um, I went with Annika a couple of years ago to, to Soweto. Yeah, Annika we did a thing where we washed people's feet and it was reconciliation. And I went there thinking, but I didn't, I wasn't a part of this. I was, I was a teenager, man. I was just going to school like I was supposed to. I didn't make any decisions. In fact, my claim to fame is my first decision I ever made about um, what was going on in the company, country was at the referendum in, was it 92? And I voted that everybody can vote. That was my claim to fame. But when I went with Annika, I had to check my heart. Because it's no use washing somebody's feet and saying sorry for the things that have been done to you. But sitting there myself and thinking, but I never, I never had a part to play in this. So I asked the Lord, I asked the Lord to show me, is there anything I need to repent of? And it might seem Mickey Mouse to somebody or some of you, but, but it was pretty big to me. But God took me back to a memory, clear as day, and I can still remember it, okay? I was in my, my really nice uh, school, uh, third story, and I remember standing at the top, and one day I was just watching um, the kids, the black kids coming back from their school, and I was just watching them walk by. God took me back to that specific memory, and I remembered, He showed me that on that day, I didn't even care about their school. I didn't care about their education, where they were going, why they were going back home when I was at school. I just didn't care. I just cared about myself. And that was something I had to repent of. I had to repent of the fact that I did not care. That where I'm supposed to love my neighbor as I love myself, I really just, I didn't care. God took me back to that memory. I can still picture it. I just didn't care. So I repented of that. I repented of the fact that when I was young, I did not care about what was going on in the country. I did not care about my fellow man. I did not even consider standing up for him. Something to repent of, hey? Now some of you might still be sitting here, but I, I really don't have anything. It's okay, but when, if we get together and we repent of that, we repent together. Daniel's repenting, hey? Daniel was a good guy in the Bible, hey? He was a good guy. Who thinks he's a bad guy? No, he's a good guy. I mean, he didn't even eat meat or drink wine, just ate vegetables and water. He was really good. He didn't want to eat any meat that was offered to an idol. 
He was a good guy. But when he confessed the sin on behalf of the nation, he said, we have sinned. We have wronged you. That's what corporate repentance looks like. We get together and we say, we have wronged you, Lord. You might not like it, but it's true. Let me just look at my notes here. I think I ran ahead or left something behind. I want to throw in just a little side note on, on the repentance and reconciliation that, that um, I've done with Annika and that. And I've had a conversation with people about what we, what we were doing and that. And people often say, well, when do we stop saying sorry? When do we stop repenting? Surely once I've repented, I've repented. I tell you what, we stop repenting to people when everyone is healed. And until that day, we will continue to repent because how do you know your repentance to that person that day does not bring healing to their body? But you've repented before, so you're not going there again. So we will do it until everybody is healed. And we will make sure that we don't go back there in our hearts or in our minds so that it's between us and God. So we will continue to repent. Another statement that I put it on my WhatsApp status this week. It's not my own thought. I can't even tell you whose thought it is, but I pray that whoever's thought this was gets like super blessed right now unless they're sleeping. Uh, part of repentance is the humble acknowledgement that no one is without sin. Part of repentance, part of corporate repentance is the acknowledgement that no one is without sin. Nobody in this room today is without sin. When we repent of corporate or historical sins, we are not saying that the Lord sees us as guilty of those sins. But from where we are standing now, with what we know and believe now, and our hindsight is 2020, so if we, if we repent on behalf of what was done by our ancestors before us, if we repent and we can repent of those things, especially if they haven't been dealt with, God doesn't see guilt us as guilty of those things. But we can say that where we're standing now with what we know, <laughs> maybe how far we've come along, that if we were put back into that situation, we would not do it again. <laughs> we hope that we would not do it again. We really hope that we wouldn't do it again. We repent because it is, because it is wrong. And if we could take back what we know now, we would encourage and urge our ancestors not to do wrong again. <laughs> and then I wrote, we're also very aware um, and we would need to ask ourselves, would we have done it different? And that's why we're not better than them. Because if we were there, would we not have done the same thing? Would we have not have fallen for the same lies that got us into this place in the first place? Sometimes it is appropriate to say and repent. It's not who we are, it is who we were, and it's not who we want to be. What's going on or what happened back then, it's not who we are, it's who we were, and it's not where we want to go again. And I'm telling you, if we have a repentant heart, we've got less chance of going back there than if we were just like, okay with the fact that we didn't do it, it was done, we're moving on. There's a story in Jonah 3. You guys know the story of old Jonah. God sends him to preach to Nineveh. Hey? His message to Nineveh is God is going to destroy the city. In fact, in 40 days, Nineveh will be destroyed is the word that he gives them. Okay? Nineveh was a big, big city. Okay? They say it took three days to walk through the city. It was big. There was a lot of people there. 
And Jonah walks through the city and he shouts, After 40 days, Nineveh will be destroyed. In fact, verse 1 says, The Lord spoke his word to Jonah again and said, Get up, go to the great city of Nineveh and preach to it what I tell you to say. So Jonah obeyed the Lord and got up and went to Nineveh. It was a very large city. Just to walk across it took a person three days. After Jonah had entered the city and walked for one day, he preached to the people, saying, After 40 days, Nineveh will be destroyed. The people of Nineveh believed God. They announced that they would fast for a while, and they put on rough cloth to show their sadness. All the people in the city did this, from the most important to the least important. When the king of Nineveh heard this news, he got up from his throne, took off his robe, and covered himself with rough cloth and sat in ashes to show how upset he was. Greatest revival ever to take place when the whole city of Nineveh repented and, and turned from their ways. And we know what happened, that the Lord did not destroy Nineveh. But he saw their hearts. The whole city. I ask you with tears in my ears, do you think there were, everybody in the city was bad or do you think there was one or two or three, maybe four good people in the city? I think there was a couple of good people in the city. God's people are everywhere. People who love the Lord are everywhere. There's God-fearing people in Parliament. There was God-fearing people in Nineveh. But it says that everybody fasted and put on sackcloth and ashes. And the Lord saw their hearts and he saved the city. And it was not destroyed after 40 days. When we talk about corporate repentance, you're going to need to check your heart because as, when we come together as Wellspring Ministries, don't sit here and say, I'm not a part of that. I'm not going to repent. You say, Lord, I'm going to repent now because I never want to go there either. And I'm sorry that this body went there or my family went there or my town went there or my business went there. There's another place where you can repent. To confess sin corporately is to confess that we all have a unifying problem of sin. Our sin unifies us. Our repentance unifies us too. Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. If we repent as a church, it will unify us. It will bring us back to where God wants us to be. Bring us back into his throne room, back to the plan that he has for us. And for those reasons alone, I would not want to miss out on repenting as a body. For anything, big or small. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, we need to be humble, will pray, seek my face, turn from their ways, their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven and I will heal their land. Does our land need healing? The people around us need healing. This world is a mess, church. <laughs> it's a mess. And I think it's a mess because there hasn't been enough repentance going on. We haven't repented, we've conformed. And we need to humble ourselves. We need to say we're not better than the next guy. We're not the best church in Petra Teef. Wellspring Ministries is not the best church in Petra Teef. The best church is the church of Petra Teef. But we're a church that is very committed to what God has called us to do and we don't want to miss out on it. My family is not the best family in Petra Teef. But I believe God's called us as a unit to touch people and so if there's anything in the way of us touching or being used by God to reach people, then we will confess it as a family. We will humble ourselves. We will say that we are wrong. We will pray. We will seek God's face. 
And in the next two weeks, you're going to need to be seeking God's face because we're going to get together and we're going to pray. And uh, we're going to repent of things we need to repent of. And we're going to get serious about it, church. It's in two weeks' time, so if you want to skip church, skip church. Okay, at your own peril. <laughs> I, w- I wouldn't skip church. We're going to have cake afterwards. Not really. We confess because our hearts are after God and we want nothing between us. So prepare your hearts, church. Is that cool? Prepare your hearts. And start preparing your heart by asking God to show you anything, and we've talked about it, anything between you and Him. And then you can start as a couple. Then you can start as a family. Maybe you can start as kids. My kids have got lots to repent of. Just kidding, seeing if they're listening. Check that face at the back there. So. I don't want to make light of it, but I want you to prepare your hearts in the next few weeks so that when we get together, we can repent. God has got great things in store for us, church. I know I stand here without jumping up and down and saying it, but I really, really, really believe it. And so I really, really believe we're going to repent. And we'll probably do it again and again, and again, until Jesus comes back. But we want to be effective. We want to be close to God. We want to walk walk and be led by Him. So Father, we come to You this morning, and um, we don't want to miss out on anything that You have for us, Lord. In fact, let's just take that off the table too, Lord. Lord, we want to We want to seek your face and we want to find you as individuals and as a as a as families as a body as a church we want to find you lord we want to get close to you lord we confess that we are sinners and that we don't want anything between be between us and you so holy spirit would you show us Would you start showing us even now if there's anything between us and you? No matter how small it is. The Holy Spirit just showed me something and immediate thought was, no, that can't be it. That's something so small. But Holy Spirit, I hear what you are saying. And I don't want anything between me and God. to show us as a body if there's anything that we have missed over the years that we have to confess and say we are sorry. I pray, Father, that the enemy would not be able to make light of what we are talking about in church right now, repentance, but that we would take it serious. Holy Spirit, show us and lead us. Yeah. I tell you what, if the Holy Spirit shows you something as an individual, as a family, as a business, deal with it in the next three weeks, two weeks, so that when we get together, we can focus on us as a body so that we can repent. And remember that repentance is turning and going in another direction. Um, yeah, so right from the beginning of the service, I've really felt that if anybody would like um, prayer for healing, we would like to pray with you. Um, s- man, once again, if you've just got the sniffles, but you've had enough of it, just come to the front. We'd love to pray for you. In fact, we've got this oil, and we just we'll squeeze it up your nose. It's actually really good. But the Lord loves to touch people's hearts. It doesn't even have to be physical healing. Maybe it's emotional or mental or whatever it is. Maybe you need a word from the Lord. Come to the front. We'll pray with you. Okay. I'll I'll call a few people to pray with me. Um, But yeah, have a a good week. Um, 